Good morning and welcome to Inside the College. I'm Dr. Maggie McMenamin, President of Union County College. We have an exciting episode today and our first guests in the first segment of the show are three individuals from uh, the college. One of them is Professor Dr. Beth Rothman, a senior professor from the Institute for Intensive English. And the interesting thing about Dr. Rothman, or one of many interesting things, is she's also a physical therapist. And our other two guests are two of our wonderful graduates from the class of 2018, and they are gradu graduates of our physical therapist assistant program, and they are Christina Rodriguez and Alyssa Ferraro. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you all here. And we're really here to talk about a special event that occurred in late December and early January where our two students joined Dr. Rothman on a service learning trip to the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with Dr. Rothman. Can you give us a little background on the trip? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I started PT Beyond Boundaries 10 years ago. What is PT Beyond Boundaries? It's a nonprofit where I bring students from the United States to work in rural countries, mostly the Dominican Republic, and we partner with another group down there, Cambian de Vitas. And in the morning, we build a house, and in the afternoon, we have a physical therapy clinic and work with physical therapists from the Dominican Republic and so help them really get their skills. Like a improved. combination of a Habitat for Humanity concept and a Doctors Beyond Borders concept, or yeah. Doctors Without Borders concept. It's better. It's better. <laughs> All right, there's more. <laughs> but but it's, it's wonderful because uh, in the past, they started the organization eight years ago after being on a service trip and being inspired that it would be so great to bring students. And my husband decided that uh, he would bring law students and I would bring physical therapist students from New Jersey and we'd partner with this group and, and do a great service learning trip. And did, then this did the year, PTs actually do construction? The PT oh, yeah. students and they'll, the PT assistant students actually do that? You guys talk about that. So go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Christina, tell us about what kinds of things you did on this trip. Oh, we started with the house build, uh, which took about five days. Um, we mixed cement. We poured the cement. Start from scratch. Started from scratch. Well, two, a week before the community builds, they uh, did. They set the it community up. comes together and they built the foundation. So we started with the foundation already, and within the first day, we had we had the walls up. It was amazing to see. Wonderful, wonderful. What was the biggest uh, challenge associated with building? I would say mixing the cement. That was rough. We were we sat. Oh yes, we sat there for hours. We sat on the cinder block and mixed <coughs> cement for about five hours. Yeah. Oh, I remember that <laughs> yes. with a girl with one of the community. Yes. The whole idea of coming on the Vitas is to join the community, not that we're coming down and doing charity. The whole idea is to teach the people there how to do these skills so they can use them elsewhere. And, and even, then maybe build after you leave? Or be a part of a building team and mm -hmm. it becomes employment for them. And then for, for what I learned from Jose Abreu, who started Cambian de Vitas, was you know, teach a man to fish. We go down there and by working with the physical therapists that are down there that aren't fortunate enough to have the education that you guys had or the PT students have, and by working with these students, those people get so inspired that they start teaching themselves on YouTube. And I've gone down and lectured them a few times. And what did you think of those therapists that were there? Oh, they and were what amazing. had you heard originally, Alyssa? Tell the so, story. Well, but, but, hang on. So the morning was building, and mm -hmm. then the afternoon was physical therapy. Yes. yes. OK, so you're both PT <coughs> assistant mm -hmm. graduates. Yes. So you were working with physical therapists in Dominican Republic? Yes. yes. All right. Tell and us also Rutgers. Well, um, there was a, I had done my affiliation um, at JFK, and I met a student there, and she told me after the trip, when I told her I went on in, with Beth, and she was explaining to me that the, the clinic down there was just an absolute mess, and that the PTs didn't really know what, what we know here. The sophisticated yes. practices. <clears throat> and, and, to see, and to see that going down there now, and how much it built up, and how if you walked into the clinic, it was just a, it's just as good as what we have here, and that Beth would contributed to that is just such an incredible, incredible experience. So what kind of <coughs> things did you do in the afternoon when you were working with patients? Oh, we did a bunch of stuff. We saw a the lot of different patients. The first two days are on site. The then one day, day. We, then the next day we do home care, and then the third and the fourth day we work in the in the clinic in the small city outside of the rural community. Mm -hmm. So why don't you talk about those experiences then? Okay. Well, the, in the uh, village, we set up shop basically in this 
um, empty building. We set up you have folding tables and blow up pillows and Beth brought yoga mats for us to have the patients lay down on and we had quite a few people sign up there was almost it was over 40 people that came uh, we couldn't even get to all of them 40 mm -hmm. people from the community from the I mean, community they can't afford to go to the city they can't afford to right. take the motor taxi into town so to you were in a rural part of the yes. Dominican yes. Republic now you were working with PT students from Rutgers yes so a group of PT students from Rutgers and, and the two of you from the Union County College Physical Therapist Assistant Program yes. were doing the treatments. Yes. yes. Now, what kind of diagnoses did you see, Alyssa? <laughs> we saw um, in the rural vi village, it was mainly more like SI joint dysfunction. or SI, it's, it's so translate. Sa sa sacroiliac <laughs> so joint dysfunction. So that's the pain I have in my very in low, low back. back yes. mm -hmm. um, mainly because most people in the village, have, they have poor body mechanics when they're doing any type of yard work or they're cooking so we really emphasize proper body mechanics especially for the women as well um, and then in the clinic when the, the the city we saw we saw a lot of very like a wide variety of diagnosis stroke with Parkinson's um, amputations uh, just Mus muscular, muscular dystrophy. dystrophy that was a great story <coughs> the, the child came in to the clinic and uh, Clearly, was a little de developmentally delayed, and these two look at this kid and take off his shirt. Now, mind you, there's DPT, Doctor of Physical Therapy students there, and those are the Rutgers students, right? And they're not—they're supposed to assess, not diagnose. So this is pretty impressive. Kid takes off his shirt, and one of them says, "You know, look at that—a wing scapula. You know, it's Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. The Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, and um, weakness next thing, of the serratus anterior. Exactly. Good job." <laughs> Next thing, guest lecturer. Next thing, <laughs> next thing I found out was, uh, next thing I see is um, one of them says, you know, we'll get him down on the floor, let him do a Gower sign. The PT students are sitting there like this. You know, they 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 were they were baffled that PTAs know this kind of stuff. And, and then was they, the Gower sign positive? Yeah, it was and a then the best sign. part, my favorite part of the story is, then they ran and got the two of them ran, ran and got a ball and got him to do play therapy and also continue to assess while they were, I think you did that in order to do, get him to do a gallery yeah, sign. Because the kid the wouldn't floor, cooperate, right. you know, he's five. And uh, so they went and got a ball and there's photographs that, that you'll probably show of um, the two of them playing with the kid on the ground in order to get him to cooperate. It was really wonderful. Christina, what was the most memorable <coughs> experience while you were in uh, Dominican Republic? Honestly, bonding with everyone. Uh, when you go to another country, you don't really know what to expect. And I think when you are able to have such a bond with building a house and working with people, and even the kids, the, so many of the kids were are there and helping with the house build, I think it was just so amazing just to see how they work together and how happy they are you know, with so little, and that really was a humbling experience. You were for there me. for about uh, nine days, Christina? Is that about nine or ten days? But, mm -hmm. Yes. What was your most memorable experience? Um, well, I love working with patients with neurological uh, diseases, and I never really got the chance to prior to this trip. And then working with all these types of people that had these diseases was a, a clear reassurance that this is exactly where I need to be, what I need to be doing. In neuro. Yes. And, uh, and another thing, in the clinic, you know, sh the two of them were just so anxious to try stuff. and. The PTs from the DR are busy videotaping and taking notes, and uh, the two of you came up with exercises. There's photos of them in the parallel bars. I mean, they were so anxious to jump in there, and I was so blown away by having PTs. They weren't students. wallflowers. <laughs> they Union made, County College physical therapist assistant students made an impression you in be the very Dominican proud. Republic. I was incredibly we proud. Are. I was what's what's proud. next for you, uh, Christina? Where where are you headed next? Um, well, next are the board exams. Okay. Uh, so that's in July. And so are you working yet? Um, I'm not working yet, but I'm hoping to get a job soon after. I've gotten two offers so far, so that'll be exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Wonderful. And Alyssa, tell us what your next steps. Well, aside from the boards, like Christina said, um, I have an interview set up with JFK Medical Center, mm -hmm. which is exactly where I want to be. I because love Because of their reputation for neuro? Yes. And um, my dream since I'm in high school has been to go to physical, 
to go to PT school. Okay. Um, so that's my absolute next goal. So you'll be starting <coughs> the process of taking additional college classes and applying to the Rutgers or the Kane program, or what? What's what's the plan? She already has a bachelor's. So. Yeah, they both have a bachelor's. So the PTA program attracts very high-level students. Sure. They both have bachelor's degrees. Mm -hmm. So where where will you be applying? I I'm really hoping for Mercy or Dominican. Those are my two top schools that I really really want to go to. So uh, I can Mercy continue. and Dobbs Ferry. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in Dominican ways. in the city. I think I believe it's in the city. Well, explain New York. why. Oh, because they're they're those are weekend programs, and that means that I can still work as a PTA and practice what I learned during on the weekend and apply it during the week. Yeah. And still earn a salary. It's the great mm -hmm. thing about being a PTA yeah. is that you can do that. Okay, Dr. Rothman, you've got an interesting <laughs> history. So how do you, how does a physical therapist do ESL teaching? Tell oh. us about that. You work in the institute here. Yeah, so I well, want to give a shout out to what is one of our flagship programs at Union I'm County College. very proud to be Not part of it. Not just PTA, <laughs> yes. but the Institute for Intensive English. Well, it started out, I was originally the director of the PTA program here 19 years ago, and uh, during that time I got a master's to teach ESL because some of my best students and my fav favorite students, no, not next before I met you guys, uh, <laughs> were ESL students. Uh, they were challenged and they needed extra help, and I just was able to do that, and they but one is at Columbia now, uh, as she went to Columbia to become a DPT, and uh, it was just a really wonderful experience to work, help ESL students, so that's how I got started with it, and uh, then the pr opportunity presented itself nine years ago, and I asked to be transferred to the ESL Jumped department, and wonderful. now I get to do both, and that's beautiful, and right now, I just did my talk to the PTA program last week to get my next two students to come with me on the trip. So you're going to be doing another trip. Oh, absolutely. And, and you'll be taking more Union County College well, students that's, with you. That's that's the second part of what I was going to say. The first part is is that one of my P, my ESL students from this school is now in the PTA program. Wonderful. So I was so thrilled to see that. That was just a real joy. So how can um, our viewers maybe help to promote this program? Well. My, my next step and my next dream, and thank you for asking that, is I want to bring two ESL students next year to uh, the Dominican Republic to be translators. And that would be just a perfect mesh of two great programs from Union County College and, and do service learn and expand the service learning program to another pro program. But the ESL students don't have the money. You guys are pretty much guaranteed a job when you get out, so I don't ask for scholarship for you guys and the trip is not that expensive that you, you most most students can swing it but ESL students are mostly working to put food on the table and support a family and so I really would love to try to raise money to send to high level ESL students who are interested in healthcare to come with me to translate and um, so I understand you set up a fund with the Union County College Foundation yes I did thank you for so remembering on the that. lower part of the screen right now is contact information for the Union County College Foundation where any of our viewers could make a donation to help support this extraordinary service learning opportunity for Union County College students Union County College students in our Institute for Intensive English to join our physical therapist assistant students and doctoral students in physical therapy at Rutgers University on a trip of a lifetime to engage in house building and uh, physical therapy treatment for individuals who are much less fortunate in the Dominican Republic. Dr. Rothman, thank you so Alyssa, much. and Christina, thank you so much for joining <laughs> me this morning. It's a great program. You have so much to be proud of beyond this service learning, just your, your graduation from the program. We all wish you the best of luck in your, in your physical therapy board exams. We know you'll do great and that you'll be helping to help uh, transform our community one graduate physical therapist assistant at a time. Dr. Rothman, thank you for your leadership in thank both you. of these programs. Thank you. Thank we'll you. be right back after these messages. Thanks to my scholarships and the combined effort to the UCC Foundation, I am graduating today. Today I'm graduating. Thank you, Union County College. Today we're graduating. Thanks, Union County College. Today we're graduating. Thanks, Union County College. Thanks to your scholarship, I'm graduating today. Thank you, Union County College. Hey, I'm just.
excited to be here. I just want to thank UCC for guiding me along this path. It's truly been a, a journey with you guys. And uh, I look forward to meeting all of you again soon. Welcome back to Inside the College. I'm Dr. Maggie McMenamin, President of Union County College. My guest for this segment of the show is our new Sheriff, Pete Corvelli. Welcome, Sheriff Corvelli. It's great to have you here. Thanks, Doctor. Tell me about your background. We know that you're the new Sheriff, and, and there's been a long history of great Sheriffs in Union County, and I've heard great things about you from Sheriff Froelich, God rest his soul, yes. to Sheriff Cryan, and now you're in the, in the big chair as the Sheriff. Tell us about your background. Where are you from? Six months in. Um, I'm originally from Hillside. Uh, I moved to Kenilworth in 1999. I started my career in Rawway Prison in 1992. Did two years in Rawway. Transferred over to the Hillside Police Department. Uh, was in patrol about 13 years. I was a detective for six. Uh, finished off my career as a sergeant running the night shift. In Hillside? In Hillside. Uh, retired. I was offered a position at the Juvenile Detention Center which I was the director of custody for about eight or nine months and then transferred over to the adult jail in Elizabeth. Uh, while at, uh, at the adult jail, uh, the conversation came up, a uh, couple jockeying for moves in the political world. Sure. Uh, Sheriff Cryan, now a senator, was offered the chance to run for senator. They uh, came in my office and uh, there's no looking back. Well, so you've been uh, a police officer in a community here in Union County, and you've been a correctional officer here in Union County. Actually in Rawway Prison. At Rawway. At the state, right. And what, what kind of work did you do at the uh, juvenile center? I mean, uh, juvenile ran custody. So, we were, so what does that mean? We were in charge of about, at the time I was there, we had about 30, 40 kids. Um, segregation, making sure they go to court. Um, no problems here and there. Um, pretty much doing what the judge tells us to do, making sure the, the, the place ran smooth. And then the opportunity to become sheriff came up and you never looked back. Uh, it wasn't even a choice. It was a, a dream come true. Wonderful. Tell dream me, come true. Tell me, when you were, did you go to Hillside High School? I went to Roselle Catholic. Roselle Catholic. Roselle Catholic. So you're a senior at Roselle Catholic because we have a lot of young people watch this show. What did, at that point when you were a senior in high school, did you know you wanted to go into law enforcement? If you can believe it, as a senior in Roselle Catholic, I wanted to be a dentist. Okay, you wanted to be a dentist. Wanted to be a dentist. Went to uh, Rutgers. All right. I went in to New Rutgers. Brunswick? Went to Rutgers in Newark for in four New years. Um, and what'd you major in up there? Economics. Okay, so, so here we you go. want to be a dentist, and go. you major in economics, and you become a cop. That's right. So while in Rutgers, hanging out with my friends, uh, playing softball, well, why don't you take the test? I'll try it out. Oh, the, the civil the service test. Civil service. Okay. okay, I take the civil service test. Uh, score fairly well. Um, check every box I could check. Fireman, policeman, corrections, uh, juvenile officer. Get a call from the state. Okay, here we go. You did well on the test. Did obviously. well on the test. Um, was one of the first groups to be uh, uh, called. Go down to Trenton. Back then we had a, a day long of uh, tests. Get a call back in about a week. Uh, would you like to uh, work at Railway Prison? Now, you are still a student at Rutgers, Rutgers Newark, Newark at this point. Right. Okay. So I get the call. Um, you're probably going to be working 2 to 10. This is great. I go to school at 7 in the morning. So I would go to school 7 in the morning, probably end up around 12, 1 o'clock, jump in the car and go to work in Railway. The only problem is, if anybody's familiar with corrections, there's a little bit of overtime involved. If somebody doesn't show up, you're staying until there's enough You're staying or you course. accept it. I was kind of both. And as we say it, I was bit by the overtime bug. The money was coming in. Uh, the, the studies laxed. And we'll just put it like this. I didn't finish college. Okay. All right. 100 credits plus and didn't finish. There's still time. So we'll there's talk about time. that offline. There's still time and we'll, we'll see what happens. So you loved your career in, in in uh, criminal justice, in law enforcement. I, I enjoyed my career. So, but And it happened somewhat accidentally, just a happenstance that you heard about the, taking the test. Yes. And one thing led to another. Yes. So I know there are a lot of students here at Union County College who 
worry about their future and they get a lot of pressure. What are you going to be when you grow up or what are you going to major in? And in your case, things came out very different than what you anticipated. They did. I would, um, I would advise anybody, always keep your door open. I mean, schooling is, I have a 14 and a 16-year-old, 16, 16 uh, two daughters. I tell them stay in school. School is not for everybody, but for them, I'd like them to stay in school, but always keep your doors open. I happened to take the test, and everything has fell into place. Looking for new opportunities. Sheriff Corvelli, tell us about your work. What do sheriffs do? Questions we, we get quite frequently. Sheriffs, our main role is to take care of the courts and the judges. So what does that mean? We make sure when people have wronged the state or their fellow man that we make sure the courts run smoothly. Okay. Defendant, uh, civil cases, um, domestic cases, we make sure the courts run smooth, we make sure the judges are safe, and we transport inmates from the county jail over to the courthouses. That's so our main goal. It's your officers, your sheriff deputies, who are the officers inside the courtrooms. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, I've also seen some uh, canine units. Are they uh, members of uh, the, sh the sheriff's department in Union County? They are. They're a unit of our uh, office. Uh, our men and women, they have uh, two dogs each, uh, a bomb detection dog, and usually uh, like a work dog, we call them, that will detect uh, narcotics. Um, they're a very integral part of our office. Uh, nowadays, with these kids not understanding the, um, let's just say, the, um, the harshness of when they make prank phone calls, it really taxes our department with these dogs to clear buildings when, you know, they say oh, there's the bomb bombs. scares and things like that. It's very taxing on our office. Um, I don't know if, or understand if these kids realize the magnitude that uh, they're causing but it puts a very uh, big strain on our office with, 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 the, with our canine unit. So a total of how many dogs in the, in the department? We have 12. 12 canine 12 officers, wow. Each uh, officer has two. I know that you lost one last year, I did see. We did, the dog got sick and uh, very heartbroken, but um, just a bad situation. I saw something on Twitter about that, we're sorry we for did. the loss uh, of the department. What are your big initiatives, six months into the job, what are your initiatives that you have going now, exciting initiatives? Um, last week, which I'm very proud of, we signed on with Princeton House uh, mental health uh, aspect to uh, help our, our uh, men and women. Um, they have a very taxing job. Uh, people say they're in the courts, uh, they're only transporting prisoners. Um, whenever you put a uniform on and you're working, you are a target. You are the first person that arrives on a scene, whether it's in a courtroom or, uh, you know, transporting a prisoner. Um, we also have outside units that do community policing that deal with calls in uh, Elizabeth and Plainfield. So these guys are first responders, they're first on the scene. They come into contact with uh, many different people. They come into um, contact with uh, very different personalities, uh, very harsh situations. I can imagine. Um, we're gonna sign on with Princeton House for uh, totally free. Um, Princeton House is um, doing it through there, um, Dr. Rosaro, along with um, uh, Kenny Burkett, um, they're going to provide mental health, tra not training, but mental health um, wellness for our guys and girls if they're willing to accept it. Fantastic. So I can uh, imagine the difficult situations and the things that you can't unsee after you've it, seen it, them. It sounds, for the, for the younger group, it sounds very corny. If it helps one person, we did our job. It's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, we have another it. program uh, we're looking at specs to buy a drone. Everybody knows the, the drones nowadays, um, little helicopters that fly in the air. Um, if this drone comes to fruition, we have a, a beacon that we affi affix to the drone uh, with our Lifesaver program. When we have uh, young adults, uh, kids in the autism spectrum, uh, older folks with um, Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, they wander. Um, we get this drone in the air, they're wristlet, we plug in the number to the beacon that's flying around, it's pretty much 100% on uh, finding these folks and these kids. It's almost like an emergency positioning beacon uh, that, that uh, sailors use uh, on a absolutely, boat. Absolutely, absolutely. With the technology today, um, each individual has a different frequency, so mm -hmm. it will not go to your frequency or his frequency. Uh, we plug that frequency into the drone, the drone uh, 
pinpoints through uh, cell towers and um, technology, and it basically finds these um, individuals very fast. When will fast. you be launching this Lifesaver drone program in Union County? The spec has gone out. We're hoping to um, get funding for it quite soon, fairly quick, and um, it's basically training a couple pilots, um, which is a week or two, uh, and we can get this thing up in the air um, fairly quickly. Well, from a personal note, my I, uh, as, the, as the caregiver of a, an individual who tended to elope, we called it, this would be a, a really a lifesaver for so many families and caregivers a absolutely. of, of uh, challenged kids, but also of confused older adults. Back in my career, and I've handled quite many of them, yeah. when you have a parent or a caregiver that can't find their loved one, that time frame, by the time you get that individual back, is it's an eternity. Yeah. If this thing can find this individual in that amount of time very fast, it's, it's just a home run for everybody. Well, good news for Union County College is uh, Union County College is in the process of developing a drone technology program that could, uh, who knows, dovetail well with your drone Send lifesaver them program. Send them over. We we'll will take be them. doing that. All right. Last thing I want to ask you about, what's the challenges? What are the challenges for your office, your biggest challenges? Uh, the challenge, uh, I've been here six months now. Um, I know the, uh, the sediment on the street. Um, with law enforcement these days. Um, we are not the bad guy. Um, I've dedicated basically 26 years of my life to helping people. I'd like to get that through to people. Um, we're, we're doing our job. Are there bad apples? Absolutely. And we weed those guys out. We weed those girls out. Uh, we're here to do a service. We work for the county. We work for the citizens of Union County. So if we can get over that stigma, I mean, it makes for a better place for everybody to work, for everybody to uh, experience the courts, take care of their problems, take care of their uh, civil actions. Um, it, it, we have to change the perception on, 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 the, on the street. Difficult time for law enforcement across America, certainly, but I just noticed that, at least in Union County, there wasn't a whole lot of protesting no. because no. Union County Sheriff's Office, Union County Police Department, our municipal police officers, the prosecutor's office, we're not hearing of any abuses no. the, here. These men and women do what they're supposed to do. They're, they're, they're dedicated men and women, uh, very proud of what they do, and, and we're very proud of what they do. And serving the community, the entire community in That's Union County. That's our motto, protect and serve. My guest for this segment of the show has been the new sheriff in Union County, Sheriff Pete Corvelli. Thank you, Sheriff Corvelli, for joining me today. Uh, welcome to the new role as sheriff, and we look forward to working with you and supporting your officers in the future. Appreciate you having me, Doc. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. This has been a great episode of Inside the College at Union County College. We've had uh, Professor Dr. Rothman here from the Institute for Intensive English and two of our PT assistant students who conducted a service learning trip to the Dominican Republic. And in the second half of our show, we were joined by Sheriff Pete Corvelli of the Union County Sheriff's Office. Thanks for joining me this month and I look forward to seeing you next month for another episode of Inside the College. <laughs>